I want to set the picture here. You have been at the top of the entire tech stack, the industry, at Intel, at Google, at Facebook. You witnessed digitization, dematerialization, demonetization, democratization. Right. You've seen the power of these technologies. What was the moment that you decided, I need to focus on reinventing healthcare because it's so broken? When I left Intel in 2004 and pitched it at the Media Lab and got the faculty position, but I got distracted with a $100 laptop and thought, well, I can get that to work faster. Even though everybody thinks it's impossible, I thought it was much faster. Then, uh, you know, I, I got hooked into that. And when I went into Google, I was supposed to work on this. But then when I got in, <laughs> um, Sergey said, um, no, we just wanted to know you were creative. <laughs> like, so I had all these ideas for brain computer interface and healthcare. And when I got in, he really needed me to do other things where I was actually pretty happy to be working there on the things that I was doing. So I, that took a back seat. When I went over to Facebook and interviewed with Mark, I swear his feet didn't touch the ground when I started talking to him about brain computer interface. We had like <laughs> a whiteboard in the room and, and what we could do for healthcare. And I'm like, this is it. He gets it. And then I come in, he's like, well, you know, you got to fix this VR thing first. And I'm like, I, okay. I spend a lot of money, so I spend billions holding. of dollars on this. Yeah. I know, but this is before. This is like whatever. This is 2015, um, like nine years ago. I think I so. A year later, 2016. I left. You, you yeah. left. Yeah. Um, what was that? What happened? You said it's time for me to go and build my dream company. Well, it's the fourth company, and I've been in startups now for you know half of my life. So I, I'm good at the startups. I think. Um, all right. So, so many people with so many different opinions. I mean, one thing I did for Facebook and for Google, since the core competency of the executive management was really optimizing click through revenue for ad sales, because let's face it, that makes sad, money. It's sad to say that. Yeah. It's true. Or, yeah. or whatever, Gmail or like getting social, a lot of things like that. But it wasn't on these new technologies. So one of the things I tried to bring in is a wide variety of expertise that we could share what we're doing and just take feedback, you know, and like, it's just frustrating because the, you know, educating these, the, the software giants in this other thing, it was actually faster and easier just to start your own and build a thing without all the politics. And I'm not, you know, it's just, it's, look. Moonshots, you know, you could call NASA a moonshot, but it was like part of the Cold War. The Wright brothers was a moonshot. Yes. The invention of the birth control panel was a moonshot. There's small teams that did it, you know, somehow. And I think it's just easier, honestly, to do it that way. All right. So it's 2016 and you found Open Water, which is the extraordinary company we're about to dive into. Where does the name Open Water come from? Peter Gabriel. Mm. Uh, Tell me about that. The, Peter's amazing. Peter Gabriel, the the rock star human rights activist extraordinaire, um, started calling me. I knew him from my art school multimedia days in the 80s, 90s. And I ran into him at a conference and told him what I was doing. He started calling me every day saying, you've got to leave Facebook. You have to do this outside. And he started writing. He wrote this essay about um, open water, about um, our thoughts flowing like water and having mm -hmm. to take swimming lessons to learn how to deal with it because it would really change how we interact with each other if we are sort of transparent in all of our human weaknesses and seven virtues and seven, you know, whatever, all the the issues that one has if it was transparent. So he he really strongly encouraged me and kept calling. And we had all these great conversations. So I said, okay, great, let's do it. Can I use the name? And he let me use the name. So he's Amazing. he's got sweat equity. He's also an investor. As yeah. Um, and and I, got, I have to say full disclosure to everybody listening and watching. I am an investor through my venture fund. I'm in a proud advisor of open water. So I'm totally and completely biased. And I'm sharing this with you because of the extraordinary work that Mary Lou, as you shall soon see and have seen, is doing. So I want to make sure that disclosure is out there in the open. Um, so I love that. And Peter Gabriel's probably greatest contribution to society will be the fact that he pushed you to get the company going. <laughs> I've done so much. 